Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? What is going on? I wanted to uh, go over some things today that I've been uh, thinking about and um, regarding the stone tools. Um, I don't I don't have just an interest in stone tools. I also have an interest in uh, what were the stone tools used for, say twelve thousand years ago, and what what were they use like what were they using the stone tools on specifically what kind of animals what kind of plants what kind of what were they using the stone tools for right but there's also what were they eating what were they living like and what was life like back then it's all very um blurry to me i could picture it but there's no clear answers in <clears throat> what it was like i've uh i've come to some of my own conclusions on uh reasons certain arrowheads or spear points were shaped certain ways or uh how they were hafted what they were hafted to say uh bone or wood um how these weapons and tools were used perhaps for uh even uh kind of deadfall traps with uh, spear points on them would work. And a good example of that, of somebody using that technology is uh, Sean Woods did a mouse trap. So um, he used the Spanish windlass with a with an arrowhead or a spear point tied onto this trap and it very quickly killed the critter. So that got me thinking a little bit were these all projectile points? Probably not. A lot of them might have been even tied to like, uh, like if you walk past a, a tree and there's a trigger for the tree to come flying out and have these projectile points or spear points on them or in them, like tied, like right directly into the tree branch. And then the tree branch swings and hits the animal. Um, I've been wondering about that. I've also been wondering how many of these uh, even smaller projectile points were actually knives. Because uh, from from my experimentation, these uh, smaller knives or medium-sized knives work way better than bigger knives. The bigger knives are, uh, are, are nice to look at and all, but um, they're, they're a little unwieldy. They, they don't... Uh, they don't feel as good as like a, say a, you know, a modern butcher's knife. If you're holding something the same size made out of stone, it just don't feel right. And if it don't feel right, it's probably not right. So I've been going through some uh, different um, artifact books and uh, certain things online, just looking through different artifacts, reading, uh, looking at the measurements and the sizes and uh, to see if there's been any protein analysis. Protein analysis is, uh, let's say, uh, 10,000 years ago, somebody threw a spear into a camel and then proceeded to kill a mouse with it, with the same point. That uh, protein will will soak into the into the stone, into little crevices in the stone, and then 12,000, 10,000, whatever years later, when they do a protein analysis on it, they'll be able to tell what animal that projectile point killed or at blood and tissue on that point or knife. So I find that really interesting. Um, some of the other things that I wanted to get into was uh, the modern, modern points compared to prehistoric points or not prehistoric but um points that were being used points that were being utilized they look a lot different than the modern points uh to me it looks like a lot of the uh the artifacts were made with a uh, indirect antler and uh they didn't care so much about how pretty it looked or uh if it was flaked equally or even if it, the even if the sides were even they didn't really seem to care on, say, 90% of the artifacts that I have seen. And then you get into maybe uh, late Paleo-Indian, 
and uh, some of those points look very much so like how people make these modern points with the extremely uh, precise parallel flaking going up and down the whole piece. Very, very lance-like, very long. And uh, I really don't know why they would have done that besides to show uh, skill and status. Maybe uh, it might have been, you know, artwork. But uh, I don't know that much is known about that culture at all. So that's one of the, one of the things that uh, I try to figure when I'm looking at these points is I'm looking at lost cultures and I want to understand these cultures that have disappeared thousands of years ago and uh, the same thing you know when I'm like if I go to an extremely historic site like say Morrow Mountain and you see the quarry debitage everywhere like you just see rhyolite everywhere and it's like how many people were up here quarrying what were they using to quarry, and why did they leave all of these tools? All of these are tools. They all have little micro flakes on them. They were all used to cut things or scrape things, and it's very curious. Like, uh, you know, maybe they stayed there for a week quarrying, and in the meantime, they were using the tools from there to make their tents from hides or to make their uh, clothes from hides, you know, while they're occupying the location and quarrying. And that would make sense, but it's so, so, so much. It's so hard to comprehend how many people did this over 12,000 years. <clears throat> over a period of 12,000 years, how many people were up there quarrying for their tools to make their clothes, to go hunting, to <clears throat> whatever they needed that rock for. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of nappers... You know, they make the points, but they never test them, or they make the tools and never test them. And uh, I really I really do enjoy testing these materials, such as uh, hide scrapers or drills or <clears throat> knives or flake knives or, you know, whatever artifact that I could replicate. So in experimenting with all of this and, you know, going to <clears throat> these creeks and rivers and collecting flint and then trying to replicate the things found is, is very, um, very intense for me when I, when I do it, when I'm there. Um, it's just, it, I feel a, uh, a strong connection to the past whenever I do it. And <clears throat> I often just try to imagine I imagine the scene like if you think in this spot somebody was here 12,000 years ago probably with their family maybe they just finished hunting a camel because we had camels here 12,000 years ago maybe they finished hunting a camel and they were you know cooking camel over the fire and maybe the other two guys down there were fishing with spears and <clears throat> I just really, uh, I really like to imagine it. I really like to picture it. And in doing that, I, I feel like I gain some insight into these locations. And uh, as well as studying the landscape itself and being like, where would be the best place to camp? Probably right here, because this is where I would camp. And uh, <clears throat> me being out in the wilderness as much as I am, I feel I have a better idea of where uh, people might have camped or where good hunting grounds are, especially if the game is still there. <laughs> like, that's 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 a good giveaway of where people might have hunted. Uh, I love using the stone tools, but I also love thinking about the stone tools and thinking about these lost cultures. I go through... Uh, you know, books like um, there's there's one place in Pennsylvania called the Shawnee Mini Sink site. And whenever I'm in that area, I always stop by there. And uh, last time I tried fishing a little bit, I didn't catch anything. But I am going to go back there. I, I love the area. I love the, the rivers all around there. And the Delaware River is right there. And it's just a really beautiful place. And there's a... Uh, 
not too many places like that. So I was not surprised to hear that there was a uh, an ancient, a very, a very ancient site there. And I think one of the paths forward on finding more of these extremely ancient sites is to think where where would I personally camp? Where would I personally fish? Where would I personally hunt? Uh, as long as the river hasn't changed its course, which a lot of these rivers do, they change course over time and they meander and <clears throat> where the river is now is not where it was 12,000 years ago in some cases. Uh, in some cases, it's still exactly the same as it was 12,000 years ago. So anyway, um, I am going to actually be going through some of these books and uh, just giving some insight. I'm not going to do that in this video, and I just want to see what you guys think about all of this. And uh, I would really like your input on what you think about these stone tools and these ancient sites and these lost cultures. That is the, uh, the most important to me is the lost cultures and trying to understand the lost cultures. So anyway, I'll keep it short. That's, uh, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 minute video maybe. And I'm gonna splice in some stuff so you guys could see what I'm talking about. But uh, I thought you would appreciate my thoughts on this and uh, I would appreciate your guys' thoughts on this. So if you could chime in in the comments and tell me stories, tell me things that you have discovered yourself, tell me things that you think uh, are important for this field of work, and uh, just let me know what you overall think, and if you have any insight into these older sites, or even the stone tools, just let me know, and uh, I'd really appreciate your input. So, so um, I think I'm going to show you guys just some of what I know and some of what goes into these videos and uh, some of what goes into the research behind finding places that I find. And uh, maybe that will help you guys find, uh, you know, a lithic material that you could work and that you could experiment with yourself in your local area. So uh, I will be getting into all of that and I'll, maybe I'll bring up some uh, geology maps and show you where some stuff might be in the country. And uh, you guys can go creek crawling and uh, look for these rocks, jasper, agate, flint, chert, and look for it all yourself, which uh, I think is the goal here. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that's it for me. I'm done rambling. You guys have a good one, and I will see you soon. See you guys soon. See ya, see ya.